Hey YouTube, it's David from mdbootstrap.com. In this video, we're gonna learn how to create this memory game from scratch. So I bet you remember this game from your childhood. So we have to find pairs of the same cards. So uh, if you want to learn how to build uh, this game from scratch, writing every single line, keep watching. Okay, so as I mentioned before, we're going to learn how to create this game, which uh, except for the game itself, it also counts our moves, count time. Um, so we're going to learn how to flip cards, how to create cards from scratch, um, only using CSS um, and some prepared images. So yeah, let's get started. Uh, I've prepared for you uh, these uh, images which you can download uh, from a repository so you're gonna find in the description down below mm, so uh, do not hesitate uh, to check you're also gonna find the result code so once we're gonna write uh, entire code of our application I'm gonna upload it to github and, and to snippets so you could always refer to my code if something doesn't work for you so we can compare your code for now let's assume that this is a starting point so uh, download the images from github pause the video um, download the files and then you can follow me along okay so now let's create um, some files here so we have index.html let's uh, create style css and script css so we're gonna have placeholders for our html uh, i'm gonna use this uh, template now let's link our style CSS here and let's link our uh, our file I made a typo it's not script CSS it should be script JS obviously so let's fix it here and let's open everything with live server Okay, so okay, so we are ready to start. Let's start with um, HTML. So uh, what we're gonna need here, um, we're gonna create this uh, meta div where we're gonna store moves counter and the same for. time okay let me open a final game for reference so now we are creating this uh, this elements moves times and we're gonna update um, values with javascript here uh, okay now next to this one we need our game div and we're gonna create our cards so as you can see each card consists two faces we have a front face and back back face uh, so the back face is mdb and the front is logo uh, so now let's uh, let's create this one so let's create card now um, we're gonna add mm, data tech attribute mm, so let's check which image is first angular okay so i'm gonna add this and set it to angular mm, we're gonna use this one to compare whether our um, cards are matching are the same right so we're gonna have two cards uh, for example with view or angular and they will both have this angular mm, parameter set uh, and we're gonna compare them so let me uh, add now front so this is the front front part and let's use angular for this one this is angular and we have back which is back of our card and i'm going to use mdb bw oh, image slash mdb bw svg so i'm using this prepared svg which you can find over here this is memory card class okay so we will have two cards 
for each technology now they don't look good yet obviously but don't worry uh, once we're gonna add some css to this project uh, we're gonna get this look so for now they are just you know placing them one below the other so we have this logos in the full size we're gonna take care of it um, in the matter of seconds so what i'm gonna do we have one two three four five six six twelve in total so we have 12 cards six pairs so uh, now let me mm, duplicate this one so we have first pair second third fourth fifth and sixth so we have six cards um six pairs and now let's uh, update it um so this is our first pair now let's update the second pair so this is angular um, so I'm matching this word here and next technology will be note. So let's update it to note. Let's add capital letter here. Okay, so this is note, not mode note. Now next will be Okay, so we have all cards here. Mm, now they Again, then they doesn't look good yet because they're just one below the other, but don't worry. Since our HTML is ready, let's move to our styles CSS uh, and we're gonna fix it very quickly. Um, okay, let's start with asterisk. So we're gonna reset padding, set it to zero, um, then margin same, and let's uh, set box sizing to border box if you don't know, if you don't know what it does please check our css tutorial long story short we're gonna calculate mm, the uh, element width including uh, borders and margins and everything so uh, this this is what it does and this is margin not margins okay now for the body let's set height to 100 vh then display flex i'm gonna go quite quickly through that but don't worry we're gonna uh, we're gonna get back and we're gonna check what each and every property does to our application okay let's set some background color um something let's say d to d i prepared it before okay some something like that obviously you can adjust it uh, as you like just something cool whatever suits you best okay then uh, let's justify content center and align item center okay uh, there is still some mess over here but don't worry uh, we're gonna fix it uh, quite soon okay for the meta uh, i'm gonna leave it for now so meta just to remind you this is this part and the same applies to moves and timer let me just check whether it was it was moves and timer let's call it timer okay so we're gonna leave it empty as for now and now let's move to our game div okay so we have it here game now with 40 percent height 40 percent and we're gonna play with it later because that will change the size of our cards depending on that as you can see we can have them um, either vertical or horizontal depending how um, much percentage we're gonna use for that now margin zero and auto so the top one zero and the, the other auto display flex or is our preview oh here it is okay display flex and flex wrap wrap mm -hmm. okay now let's move to card single card so we're gonna calculate with using calc and we're gonna use 25% minus 10 pixel for some margin, okay? And the same with height, but we're gonna use 33% instead. And if you don't know why, 
uh, you're gonna see the very very soon let's add some margin five pixels and let's change position to relative okay and finally let's style our images because as you can see these images are still too big they are overlapping so now we're gonna uh, fix it quickly so with 100 percent height 100 percent so this is gonna take 100 percent of its parent now padding 20 pixels to make it smaller you can already see that we are getting some cards over here mdb now position absolute and yeah okay now it's working fine i had a typo here so you can see now that we are getting this overlapping so we have a front and the back of our card at the same uh, place uh, okie dokie now let's add some border that we're gonna see it later once we are gonna add some add once we're gonna add some color to it okay and now it's time time to add some transformation to um to our uh, to our cards so first i'm gonna do card active and we're gonna transform it scale zero let's say 97 transition transform zero to second and transition okay now let's add front transform rotate y 100 degrees and now this is tricky mm, how to show you that so let's let's have a look closer look at this one so try to check this node or php logo without this they are correct so we have p h p uh, you know what let me quickly rename this one so now you can see uh, this what is going on so this is a normal look and now when we transform it we are getting this mirror view right so it, they have been mirrored which obviously you can't see on angular or view logo or react because they are same after transformation after rotation but you can clearly see this one on php and uh, node logos so you can already got this feeling right so we uh, you can imagine that this card is laying on the table and that's why it's rotated so uh, let me uh, fix this name okay so now we have like this card two faces front mdb and the back uh, which which stands for technology okay and now what we we are doing all this because we want to add this flip uh flip class which will basically rotate our card by 180 degree and this is where magic happens so let's have a look at this now so if we add a flip class to to the card you can see that this first card has flipped well you didn't see this yet but let me do it again i hope you can observe it now so now it's flipping right okay um now let's make it um 
more visible for you. So uh, let's add this transform style preserve 3D then transform scale 1 and transition transform let's say 0 0.3 sec okay so now when I'm saving the file you can see this rotation cool isn't it okay and now what we also want to do we want to get rid of this MDB once it's rotated. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna set back face visibility to hidden. So as you can see now, depending on which part, front or back end, is uh, on the back face, on the back side, it's laying on the table, then we are making this hidden, right? So without it, we can see that it's laying behind it, right? Like here, this and that. And once we add this one, we are getting this uh, nice rotating effect. Okay, so let's add some background color, uh, something like 48C6EF. Okay, now you can see card. Let me reset this one. And now you can see our card rotating. Okay, cool. So um, as I said, let's go through this quickly. Pardon my interruptions for a moment. I just wanted to let you know that besides this video, we also released a lot of different tutorials, especially you should check our Bootstrap 5 crash course, which we released recently. If you want to watch this video, you're gonna find the link somewhere over here or in the description down below. This is a perfect tutorial for the people who haven't used Bootstrap 5 or Bootstrap at all in the past, as well as for those who've been using Bootstrap for, for some previous projects and would like to know what has changed. And believe me, a lot has changed in newest Bootstrap 5. This video and this tutorial obviously is completely free for everyone. It's available on the YouTube. And if you would like to support us uh, to help us creating more tutorials and materials like this video and the Bootstrap 5 course, you should also try our MDB UI kit, which is available also for free as an open source. You're gonna find a link to this project down below. So give it a try and I'm sure you're gonna love it. So you could see what's what's going on here, right? So card flip is rotating our card. So every time we add this, so this has this extra flip uh, class. So this is that's why it's rotating. Now this one also rotates it, but this is this is rotated at the very beginning. So when the cards are laying on the table, uh, let's refresh this one and let me add flip to this card so thanks to that uh, our mm, we can see this logo properly because without that we would have this node.js logo mirrored right now right because when we when we set this image at the very beginning it's just like this and now when we are adding this um we are adding this rotation to the entire card with our logo we would have this mirror okay uh, active active this doesn't work yet uh, because we have typo here so it's card active so this will give us this nice press uh, experience so when we press on a card it will do this little zoom Okay, now for this one, we already dis, uh, explained this one. So we have a background color, back face visibility. You know why we use it. Border radius is obvious. With height, there is nothing special here. Now, width for the entire card, width and height, right? For the width, we have four cards one, two, three, four here. So uh, the width of each card is calculated based um, on the percentage, right? So we have 25%, um, which um, which is uh, 100 divided by 4 that gives us 25% minus 10 pixel for some spacing in between and because we have since we have three cards 
um, three rows then we are dividing 100 percent of the place holder over here uh, by three which gives us briefly 33 percent and then again uh, we preserve some space for uh, spacing now for the game so this placeholder here this is the entire game we have this flex flex wrap because without that we would have them one below the other and thanks to that we have wrapping after we reach um, a full width so we are placing cards next to each other as soon as we fill the full width we are wrapping and starting the next line with height nothing very special here and yeah and that's it and here for the flex it's because we want to have them no next to each other but one below the other and for the justification and alignment i just want to have them in the middle of my screen so here so that's why we use that okay so our css is more or less ready we are missing this meta so uh, let's quickly add missing styles font size larger uh, font family let's choose something let's say verdana and we also gonna add use flex here to justify content to the center and let's add some margin from the right side here okay so now let's move to the fun part which is obviously a javascript now this is gonna be really interesting um so let's start with a query selector so we want to catch all cards and assign them to our cards variable so document query selector all so we want to catch all card or elements which has this this class and this is because we want to do now cards for each card we want to add event listener on click and we want to call some function which we're gonna call flip card okay and now let's create this flip card function and let's see whether it's working fine let me open console here uh whoops and i messed up some oh yeah there is i don't need these brackets here i just need like this okay so now every time i click on a card i'm getting this function called okay so now it's high time to mm, add the proper function to our flip card so to actually flip our card um how are we gonna do that uh, let's do this class list add flip and we can get oh let's or let's leave it for now and now our cards are flipping okay that's perfect now let's move on um if we check a uh, source code of uh, our card you're gonna see that although our card is flipped we can still invoke uh, our function and this is something which we obviously don't want to so we're gonna fix it uh, quickly so what I'm gonna do I'm gonna do a let first card and I'm gonna assign first card to this now I'm gonna check uh, the very beginning of my function if this isn't our card and in case it is i'm just want to return so stop executing this function so let's test it right now oh, it's four i want to have three and let's refresh so now it's clicked but okay this clicked is above if i put it below you're gonna see that uh, first time i click 
it's invoking this function but next time it does nothing this is because our execution stops here right so we assign this first to uh, to this one and now we can't click it anymore obviously we can click other cards but we cannot click them multiple times uh, actually we cannot click the the last card because now we can switch it because every time I click on the other card uh, we are getting this assignment right because now when I click on this card this is our first card so I can't click on it anymore now when I click on this one this becomes our first card so I can't click on it but when I click on this one this becomes first card again right so you, you you're getting I hope you're getting what I'm trying to say now talking about that what we have to do is we have to know um, how to solve um, pairs so uh, how can we make sure that we can flip only two cards so uh, let's do it this way I'm gonna add a new variable called has flipped card and I'm gonna set it to false by default so this is gonna be our flag so this is gonna tell us whether we already have a uh, one card flipped so um, we're gonna set it here to has flipped card to true and what this allows us to do is that we can do something like this if has if there are no flipped card yet this is because we have this exclamation mark over here then we want to assign a first card and we want to change it to true right and we want to stop execution here and otherwise so if there is already at least one card flipped right then we are dealing with our second card so what we want to do is we want to do something like second card equals to this and let's add let second card and now let's do something like this console lock first card and console lock second card okay uh, let's move it to the top and let's see our console so the first card and the second card uh, actually the first card and the second card so now we can see this is first angular and second is node but we can still um, flip other cards so what we're gonna do uh, we're gonna introduce something which we're gonna call a lock board okay and this lock board is also gonna be our flag which by default gonna be falsey and now we're gonna set it to true okay and finally we are gonna add this very first check so if lock board then we want to return so if the log board is true our board is locked then we want to disable our function so we're gonna stop execution right here so let's have a look first card this one second card and log board true and we cannot turn or flip any other card okay so that's done cool we managed to solve this let's get rid of console logs and what we want to do now we want to check for match so we have two cards flipped and uh, they are blocked now they are flipped and we want to check whether they are same or not so function check for match and now we are about to use our data attribute so if you remember uh, we added this data tech mm, attribute to each of our card and now we are about to use it so if we do console log um, f 
first card data set and check our console you're gonna see that we've got this property tech over here and it's set to angular so um, what we can do now we can just uh, we can get this value by adding this property name tech and instead of logging this we can do something like this let is match equals to first card data set tech is equal to second card data set tech and now we want to do console log is match so so our console again true these are the same and false as obviously they are not the same okay now um, once we have that uh, we can decide what we want to do so if is match is true then we want to disable these cards these two cards because they are same and we guess them and otherwise we want to unflip cards unflip cards right so if they are same we want to disable them to the same cards we want to disable them so they don't flip back and otherwise we want to unflip them so we could continue playing so let's create function disable this is going to be the first one and function unflip which is going to be the second one and let's start with unflip so uh, in order to unflip uh, this is fairly easy we just have to uh, get rid of we have to remove our flip class and we need to do the same with second card so now if we use different so now if we choose wrong card we gonna get this class removed so now if we choose two wrong cards we're gonna remove these two uh, these classes uh, from both of them but this is happening so fast that this second card um, won't even flip and it's already flipping back so in order to fix it uh, we're gonna add uh, some delay so we're gonna set set timeout and we gonna create function we're gonna put this inside function and we're gonna set it to let's say 100 1000 milliseconds and now they are getting back but we cannot flip any other card anymore when we refresh the page we can do the same so it's working fine but only once and do you know why well the reason is quite simple quite obvious because we have our uh, board still locked so what we have to do now is we have to do something like a reset board and we're gonna create this function in a moment reset board function okay and now in order to reset board what we have to do we have to do something like this has flipped card set to false because there are no flipped card anymore lock board also we have to set it to false now we need to also remove first and second card and let's see if this works fine yeah so now it's working fine we can also write it um, in a little bit nicer way so we can do something like this and the same with f 
first and second card. Let's see if this is working as expected. So one, two, and obviously now it doesn't work because we didn't call this reset board when we have a match and we are calling this disable cards so um, you can already guess that we will we would like to reset board here as well and what we also want to do we want to actually disable these cards how we can disable them well that's uh, also quite easy what we're gonna do we're just gonna remove event listener so just to remind you we are adding this add um, this event listener on click to each and every card at the very beginning and now we want to remove this event listener so click flip card so we want to remove this specific event listener and we want to do this for second card as well and let's see if this work it's fine yeah right so now these cards are disabled we cannot flip them anymore now our game is almost ready but um well it's quite an easy game right if you know the position of each cards and they are next to each other so what we have to do um, we have to shuffle them now let's create a shuffle function we want this function to be called immediately after our page loads so we're gonna write it like this and we want for each card randomly change position we're gonna use math floor and math random for this and once we randomly choose a number we're gonna update the order property to our random number so now each card should be randomly okay oh i'm missing parentheses at the end so now as you can see our cards are randomly shuffled around the board uh, how does it work uh, let me quickly show you so as you can see we uh, randomly chosen number between 1 and 12 as we have 12 cards and assign it to uh, different cards um, as you can also see this is not a perfect solution because we have some numbers repeated like six over here and over there and over here but that doesn't really matter for us because um, as long as they're all shuffled even if they some of them got the same number still this gives us some um, nice randomization so this is actually working as um, as expected so now our game is is almost done right so we can play this we can search for pairs uh, but what will be also nice is to uh, somehow uh, give an information give some alert once we uh, once we finish the game right so let's add mm, some function let's add this option uh, for the uh, game to end so let's create function and game and what we want to do we want to uh, alert something like u1 okay and uh, now we need to decide when this when to call this function mm, so we're gonna use well the easiest uh, the easiest way so i'm gonna create let pairs equals zero and now every time we have uh, this match here and we are calling this disable cards function let's do uh, pairs plus plus now if pairs equals six so we found all the pairs let's call end game let's quickly 
Okay, and now once we won, um, we are getting this alert here. Oh, we didn't flip this card yet, so let's fix it by adding some delay like we did in the past. So let's set timeout. Uh, let's put this inside here and let's set it to something like 300. Okay, so now our uh, main game is ready, uh, but we also want to add uh, some extra features. So we want to count how many moves it took user to, to finish the game and how much uh, time did he uh, spend, uh, did he take to, to solve this puzzle. Uh, so uh, let's do it like this. Let's add another variable called moves equals zero. And now every time we um, flip the card, we want to uh, increase this counter, but let's do it in a function. So I'm gonna create move counter and let's create this function now. Function move counter. And obviously we want to increase move, but um, Furthermore, we want to also update this, uh, this span over here. Just to remind you, we have a span here prepared for this one. Uh, so let's get, let's get this const counter equals uh, document query selector moves. Okay, and now this counter, let's update it, counter inner HTML equals to move. Was it move or moves? Moves, okay. Moves, moves. So now every time we flip the card, our counter is increasing. Now we want to start timer, uh, but we don't want to start it when our page loads, but we want to start uh, this uh, counting this time when user flip the very first card. So how to do that? Let's add a mm, few more variables. So we want to uh, count seconds. Uh, let's make it zero by default and minutes. I don't expect someone to take it longer uh, than, uh, than 60 minutes, so hours. So let's take it to seconds and minutes. Mm, and now uh, let's do it like this. If moves equals one, so this is very first move, uh, we want to we want to start timer. So this is our function which we're gonna create right now. Function start timer. Okay, and now interval we want to set interval for our timer and uh, again let's create another variable for timer okay and now what we want to do timer inner html equals minute plus means plus second plus sex that's what we yeah so this we want to update this span now uh, let me just check this minute and second minute yeah and second actually we should say seconds and minutes uh, to keep it consistent minute seconds Okay, um, and now we want to create some timers. So we want to increase second um, and we want to set this interval to uh, 1000 milliseconds, which gives us uh, one second. So every second this function will run. And now if second reach 60, so one minute, we want to increase the minute counter and we want to uh, reset second counter 
and let's see if this works okay it doesn't work let's see why console log minute oh it's minutes and seconds obviously and seconds oh we also have seconds here now it's counting great um, so the very last thing uh, which we want to do is we want to stop our timer when uh, we finish our game so stop timer okay and we want to clear interval which will basically remove this interval so it will stop counting um, and let's update end game uh, so what we want to do we want to stop our timer and we can also change this text to something you want in uh, let's use template literals for that so you want in like this and let's test it now you want in 22 moves moves in 19 seconds okay guys thank you very much for watching i hope you enjoyed as much as i did uh, while making this um, game let me know if everything was clear if not then uh, leave me a comment down below uh, let me also remind you that this is um, th that this video is uh, part of our series where we are creating uh, games so if you navigate to our channel mdbootstrap.com on youtube um, you're gonna find more videos like this so let me just remind you that we've already created a dino game so the one which you know from uh, chrome so the jumping game uh, this is a memory game uh, and we are about to create uh, many many more um, so if you don't want to miss it don't forget to hit a subscribe button um, under this video uh, give us a like and don't forget to share with your friends if you enjoy this uh, i also encourage you to see our other videos um, as we are releasing three videos uh, every week uh, all on the programming subjects so i hope you enjoy that uh, and yeah see you in the next video very very soon